practically you can trust Emory to two host nucleus and it can completely wash out any residual of mutant mitochondrial DNA if we want to do it. So this model, even though it was uh, established in 2003, but we already have an answer and a solution for that if this really is a problem. As of today, almost all the published papers in the human X immunotron all use virus and in the studying the animal in the home. And that's why I want to use this electron fusion. It's not a virus fusion. And if you pay attention on yesterday one of the slides, and by, I think by Dr. Monet and uh, Dr. Mark Hughes uh, from our lab, even with the euploid donor embryos, the implantation rate in the good hands is almost 75 to 85 percent. But with the same euploid blastocyst embryo from 44 to 46 years old lady, the implantation rate is still around 50 percent. So there are 30 percent difference even with the euploid embryos. So that means there's some other defect, not to the spindle, but in the cytoplasma. So for that group of patients, I think 50% of the patients can benefit from this process of the spindle nuclear transfer for non-genetic reason. Now, so this is also a very powerful research tools. And the clinical application of these procedures is to save the endangered species. And so you can use the circle CX to put the nuclear of the endangered species and to replicate this endangered species hurt. So this is another potential application of this technique. But the information from this study are very important for us to confirm that if we can provide a normal healthy cytoplasma from mouse, or not as from mouse, from the healthy eggs, it definitely can help to rescue and uh, some uh, defect in the nucleus. I would like to summarize from today's talk that nuclear transfer is a very useful platform for research, for potential genetic disease, and maybe in the future for certain type of a human infertility, maybe mainly related to the female infertility. But the limitation of this technique and the safety of this technique it needs to be closely, critically followed up. And just like in vitro fertilization was originally invented in 1978, and we only know the application of IVF is for tubal effect. But today, after 50 years later, and I think only 5% of the time you perform IVF is for tubal, forget, uh, tubal factors. And 95% of the time doing IVF for many, many different reasons. So I think the future of this technique is great. But what we can do, I really don't know. Thank you.